let's learn how to save a JPEG for web and drastically reduce its file size in this easy Photoshop tutorial. So here I have an image, let's say for argument's sake this is an image I took on my phone and I want to put this on my personal website. This image is 4.6 megs, so we're going to need to bring this file size down and optimize it for web use. So let's right click, open with Photoshop. If I quickly come to image, image size, you can see I've got a 200 resolution here and the width and height are considerably larger than what I would need for online use. So in older versions of Photoshop, you can come under save and you'll see the save for web option. But if you're in newer versions of Photoshop, come to export, save for web, legacy. In my save for web dialog box, first things first, let's switch to tour. From there, I can compare my original image, which right now is exporting at 28.3 meg, to my compressed version, which is going to change as I adjust these settings here. And this will give me the new file size. So let's run through these options. Make sure under file type, we're gonna go with JPEG. And you can go with one of the JPEG presets or you can play around with the quality slider and see how this affects file size. So as we can see here, a high JPEG with a quality of 70 would give us a 1.2 meg file size. If I bring that down to around 10, I get that down to about 254 kilobytes. And if I use the zoom in options here, I can click and drag and I can look at how the original and the optimized version are side by side. So remember with Safer Web, the goal is to try to reduce the file size as much as possible while maintaining a very high quality of image. If you have any transparency in your image, if you're working from a PNG or you're working from a PSD, when exporting as JPEG, you won't be able to retain those transparent properties. Those transparent areas will be filled in with this matte color when you save. If you don't have any transparent areas, you don't need to worry about this. You can further optimize with either a progressive loading image or an optimized image. A progressive load will show a blurry version of the image and then gradually fill in the detail depending on the user's connection speed. And an optimized image can further decrease file size with additional compression, but aren't necessarily compatible with all web browsers. In an age of high-speed internet, these options aren't as important as they used to be, but it's still worth thinking about whether that's something you would like. I still think progressive image is a good idea because if someone's viewing your website with a slow internet speed, rather than looking at a white blank space, they would still look at an image that will gradually fill in. I wouldn't worry about embedding color profile. I would instead convert to sRGB. You can see there the color has slightly popped. sRGB is the standard color profile for the internet and web images. So by converting, you prevent your image looking dull or lacking color when viewed online. You can leave your preview on monitor color and make sure you do attach some metadata to the image. You really want to be telling Google and the platforms you're using where that image came from, who owns the rights to that image. So keep your metadata on. We can help with file size by decreasing the size of the image. You really don't need an image this large when you're viewing it on screens or on the web. A lot of social platforms and websites will give you best practice. So for example, say I was gonna put this image on Pinterest. I know for a fact that a width of a thousand pixels is generally best practice for Pinterest. Finally, I can further preserve image quality using some of these compression options. So by cubic compression is set as standard, but for example, if I have a lot of hard edges in my image, or I'm using pixel art, say something like nearest neighbor, preserves those harder edges. Whereas if I have a rich image with a lot of colors that blend together, something like bicubic smoother would probably be better. If I've got a lot of text on the image, then I could use something like bicubic sharper. So further enhance the image by playing around with some of these options, but bicubic is a good standard to work with. So experiment, test these different options and continually keep an eye on the file size here. As a general rule of thumb, for web imagery, try to keep every image under 200 kilobytes. Once you are happy with this web version, click save. Select a save destination, name the file, so I'll call mine dog, save for web. We've set the extension as JPEG, and from there, simply click save. So let's put this to the test. This is the original image. This is the 4.6 meg version, and there is my save for web version, right down to 75 kilobytes. So as you can see, that is still an excellent quality of image for the web. The image is still sharp, it's still concise, it's not massively pixelated, but that file size has been drastically reduced. So there you have it. That's a very simple crash course in Safe for Web to drastically reduce file sizes so that you can use those files online while maintaining the quality of image as best you can. Remember, this is for web, this is not for print. Do not treat images like this if you need 
to send them to print. Only do this to optimize them and compress them for online use. I really hope you found this tutorial helpful, and if you did, don't forget to like and subscribe. Thanks for watching, keep on designing, and I will see you for the next tutorial.